Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. Now, as my channel continues to grow, I am running out of space on my hard drive. I wanna to continue to make amazing content for you guys. But in order to do that, we have to fix the roof before it starts raining. So, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. So, after some research, I found that for my circumstance, the perfect solution would be to get a NAS aka network attached storage. Now, I started scurrying the web and on Amazon, I found a relatively cheap one for around $300. But there was one issue. It only came with two hard drive ports. Now, this channel is pretty ambitious. I think we're gonna need more than just two ports. All right, let's see. Where's my HD interface? Here it is. HD interface. Let's go with the A bay. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah, these prices are ridiculous. It's clearly a ripoff. But you know what? I think I have a better idea. Let's build our own. All right, guys. So I got all the parts laid out right here. As you can tell, they're very organized. Now, this is a smorgasbord of just parts. I got some from friends, I thrifted a few from yard sales, and I bought a few online. So everything's laid out, let's get into it. First off, we have the CPU. Now this is an Intel Xeon 3430. Now the reason we're building this whole setup is because we need storage. This is not a very powerful CPU. It's because we don't need it. You can find this on eBay for around $4.85 to $5 works really well. All right guys, so next up we have the brains of the operation, the motherboard. This is the XASIA-F. You know what, I'll have the name right here. Now this cost me around $40, very inexpensive, and it's a great motherboard. Next up we have the RAM. I have actually six RAMs right here. These are the Samsung DDR3, four gig per one. Um, so overall I have around 24 gigs. Depending on what you do, you may not need this much, but for me, I think this is the perfect setup. And these are great brands for the price, around $30. All right guys, next up we have the HBA. Now this is an essential piece if you wanna build a NAS. This is what connects from the server directly into the hard drive. I found this on Amazon for around $35. All right guys, next up we have the mini SAS to force add a cable. Now this is what connects the HBA card directly into the hard drives. There's two of them. The reason why I need two is each one has four ports. And since I have eight hard drives, I need two. These cost me around $9 each. All right guys, so next up we have the fans. Now as you can tell, these are relics. They're actually around 10 years old. I stripped them off my old gaming PC. But if you're looking for good fans nowadays, I highly recommend you check out Newegg. They have amazing prices and top of the line products. And this is my power supply. I actually stripped this for my gaming PC as well. Now, if you're looking for a power supply, I don't recommend you buying a second hand because you never know what it was doing, how long it's been running. So I do recommend you, highly recommend you to find a reliable source for your power bank. And this is my SSD card for my boot drive. I actually got this on eBay for around $30. It has 240 gigabytes, but most of you probably don't need that much. You need around 40 gigabytes and that probably should work. All right guys, and finally, we have the case. Hopefully, if my calculations are correct, this is gonna be able to house everything. Now, this case fulfills my needs because, as you can tell, it has 10 hard drive ports. 
reason why I need 10 is because, well, I need to make amazing content for you guys. So I need a lot of ports. Now, unless you work for the Pentagon and you're storing data, you don't need this many ports. You probably need about two or four. I actually got this from a friend of mine. He owed me a favor, so he gave it to me for free. Well, you know, enough small talk. Let's assemble. All right, guys, so let's put this bad boy together. So we have the motherboard and the CPU. Now, I don't know if you can see this. See, there's a little arrow right here, right? Let me get close for you guys. Now, you want to line it up with the arrow on this part right here. And be careful with this little lever. It's spring-loaded, so you don't want to break anything. There we go. Now, when you put it in, you want to line that arrow up with the arrow on that bracket. Now, be very careful, actually. I want to mention this. With this part internally, it's very fragile. Now, one little poke could really mess it up. So I just want to put it in there, give it a little shake. There we go. You got to kind of find the right groove. And then once it locks in, you're good to go. Now we have the RAM. This is actually my favorite part. It's super satisfying clicking everything in. You got to line up the grooves. You find the groove, put it down. You're good to go. Press down on it. Flip it so I can put in my bracket. So this bracket helps stabilize everything when I mount my fans on there. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just fill in the hole. All right, so we got it down right here. Now what I want to do is use my thermal compound. All right, this is going to disperse heat so it doesn't heat up. Now the rule of thumb is you want to use like a pea size, uh, maybe a little bit smaller, half a pea size, right in the middle. You don't want to go over. So you see how much I have right there? That's about how much you need. Now I want to get my middle fan bracket and line it up. Go. Now it's in. Okay, now for the fun part, the screws. So if you want to use these dumb screws right here, and just kind of gently screw it on. Now another rule of thumb for your CPU and for your motherboard is you don't ever want to screw things on too tight because things are very fragile around this area. Okay, good. Now, because they're thumb screws, you still have to use your screwdriver, your Phillips head, and just help it out just a little bit. So let's slide it in because it holds just like that. Now, you want to grab your brackets. So guys, the bracket, you always want that little nook right there to be pointed towards the fan. That's how you catch that little hole and stabilize it. But you want to do that and you hear a click. Do it just like that. It goes right into that hole. And there we have it guys. The fan is completely installed. Let's put it in the case. All right, you want to line this up. It's going to be approximately one, two, three, about like seven or eight screw holes. I believe it's this way. Yeah, there we go, guys. All right, so you want to just line up the holes, manage your wires, make sure they're out of the way. Right, now everything's lined up, guys. All right. And actually, I have this neat little tool right here. This is amazing, guys. This is not a sponsored video by Aero Max, but if you're watching this, please sponsor me. What happens is you press hold on to this, the light comes on, and as you hold on, direction you turn, it turns with you. Really cool piece of tool. All right guys, so we got everything in. Next up is our HB8 card. Now first off, I wanna connect these cores to it. Both of them, just like this. Easy enough, right? Now, I want to plug this thing in. Put your card in, now that's in. Yep, that's stable in there. Move it around, make sure everything's set, and you're good to go. There goes the HBA card. All right, next up guys, cable management. So let me just move the cables behind the fan for now. Put in our power supply. And get this piece in. Everything is lined up, make sure it's the right direction. Yep. Get my screwdriver. All right guys, there we go. Power supply is in. 
All right guys, now what I want to do is connect our main power supply cord. When you're installing, make sure you get your core management correct because if you don't, if you're off by just a millimeter, it's not going to be able to plug in. You have to start all over, which is a pain. Now when I'm plugging my CPU right next to it, and there we have it guys. Now for the fun part, installing all my hard drives. So after you plug this in guys, that's it. That's a pretty basic NAS build. Uh, take a look guys. Here's all my components. Um, the wiring and the cable management is not as great as it should be, but I'll work on that later. But there you have it guys. Pretty good looking if you ask me and super simple. All right guys, so I know this week's episode was just a little bit different, but next week I will be showing you guys step-by-step step how I install true NAS onto here. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me and I'll show you guys what's going on next week.